hello. I am on the Wildwood Trail just outside Pittock Mansion and I'm sitting on this. Can you see it bounce? It's just a fallen log. Um, I think my guides want to teach me how to make, um, <clears throat> how to really enjoy the outdoors as a playful child. I've been praying for help with play for a long time because I just seem to not be able to play. So I just found this. Look at me. Can you tell I'm bouncing? I'm, it's like a yoga ball, but it's a log. Okay, Rosalind and Jocelyn, um, I mentioned this because that, that last video I made was so funny. And I would like you to explain what is going on. Do I have a new spirit guide or um, was that just some density released and that's my new personality now? Or how is this all? Our spirit guides must be tied into our personality as well. <sighs> I haven't closed my eyes in a while. Let's do that. Well, I guess I did. Anyway. <sighs> Dear Kelly. This is fun, right? This is so fun. Um, you're having more fun, even by yourself. You're having more fun by yourself. You're actually having so much fun by yourself that you're considering doing more of that, being alone more. <laughs> it's, it's true. The rest of the world is just disappointing. Oh my God. Anyway, um, well, is it your person? Yeah, it's all, it's a soup. It's all a soup. What goes into, is it nurture or nature? Of course it's both. Nature can become nurture. Nurture can become nature. You know, the more you practice something, the more it becomes a genetic programming. So, um, it's all just different influences. That's all it is. You can't really separate it. That's your, your 3D brain wants to identify and sort and explain and all that. But does it matter? You are where you are. You don't need to go itemize how you got there. That's, that's taken care of somewhere. You just reach into it when you need it. Okay, fine. <laughs> that was a quick answer. Um, what else do you want to say then? Wow. Okay, we've got the floor, huh? <clears throat> So, um, well, we like the direction that you're taking by hiking more because on your hikes, um, you are really lo leaving that density behind on the trail. You are, you know, we told you, the trees told you that as you breathe, you loosen your density. So if you make a habit out of doing the things that you know will loosen your density, the things that you can do, the things that you in your habitual nature can, can physically do, do those things. And as those uh, activities loosen your density, it's going to open up a new uh, exercise for loosening your density. That's all the work is. We told you that releasing blocks and releasing density was the work. That's the work. And where you are now, what are you capable of doing so that you can release more density? That's your job. That's all your job is, is to release the density, to undo the programming, to undo the blocks that are holding you in this slavery mentality of nine to five, uh, auto drive. Uh, no, that's not the purpose of humanity. And as you focus on the light, and, and you focus on how to release density and head back to the light, it's going to be more fun. It's going to be more fun on earth to explore as a playground where you are. You might want to spend more time with kids because they remember how to play. Adults don't remember how to play. It's, it, we don't want to give up on them. But this, this story keeps coming back, doesn't it, Kelly, to you? The story about the 40 years in the desert the Jewish people were sa saved from slavery and then they had to, sp after the miracle of the waters parting, still, still they didn't trust. They couldn't believe it. It's not that they didn't want to trust, it's that they couldn't believe it because their minds were stuck in slavery mentality. 
So God made them wait in the desert for 40 years, which is what, a generation and a half? They had to wait for a generation and a half to like kind of move on to their next life so that the young kids who were dreaming of that paradise their whole lives got to walk into the paradise. They got to walk into the promised land. This is a metaphor. It's a metaphor for what's going on right now. We want you to be mentally flexible because we want you to release the programming that was keeping you calcified. That's kind of what density is. It's a calcification for anybody who understands that. For the midwives who see it in the placenta, the calcification is like a firming. It's an unhealthy firming and it doesn't happen uh, universally over the placenta. It just has little splotches. There's just little dense parts, right? This happened to one of Kel Kelly's um, placenta. She saw a chunk of calcification and it's just an illustration of the density that's in the mind of humans right now. So release that density. It's ha it happens in your mind. It has to be a consciousness thing. You have to see it to let it go. That's why there's all this exposure going on and talk about censorship. The shadows are coming to light. It's all parallel. It's, it, that's why Kelly can't argue with this because she sees it everywhere, everywhere. So the work for you who are resonating with this message is to release density. It, there's a million ways you can do it. Um, but once you get to the frequency of play and silly, Oh, you're at the home stretch because then you just like hit density out of the park like a baseball, hitting a baseball. It's easy. You've done the work. You've, you're like, this, this isn't worth being serious. Being serious, people, humans are too serious. You guys are so serious. And why? Why are you serious? Someone convinced you something was important. Is it that important? Is the news that important? ask yourself you know we've seen the censorship going on and Kelly said in an audio lately uh, you guys are convinced you can go to the library and learn something <laughs> really no you can't you're not going to learn your true history at the library and it's not because those books are old it's because everything was allowed in that library for you to read you know, there's hints at it, and that's how they get away with it. They, they hint the truth at you, but it's like a jewel buried, okay? The truth has been suppressed. More people have to be eager and hungry for the truth, for it to come out. It's an energetic thing. You're manifesting everything. You're going to manifest true disclosure when you are hungry for it, when you're like, I want to know the truth because um, there's going to be fears at knowing the truth. There's going to be fears, whether it's stuff that you've uh, suppressed because you're embarrassed or whether it's um, politically the truth. It's going to hurt because we trusted people. We trusted our authorities and our idols. And we're going to have to find out that they weren't trustworthy and that parts of their influence are still lingering in my lifestyle. And that's a lot of work. That's why Kelly wants to move on the farm. It's the only uh, guilt-free way of living. I can't live in the city without guilt because I know my plastic's not being recycled now. The, the fabric sheet detergent people told me that. Our plastic's not recycled. I got to change that. <laughs> Okay, which means I have to deal with all of the Tupperware issues. But um, anyways, why was I talking about that? We got to live in integrity and it's a lot of work, but that's the only way you're not going to accrue more karma because you realize once you realize your forgiveness lessons are just old karma that you're getting done with, you're not going to want more karma to come back. I don't want to start all over on this planet. I want to um, find the door. <laughs> and come and go as I please. Um, that's what Jesus did. He found the door and he left, but he came back and he didn't come back completely. He came back so that people could see him. Isn't that interesting? Do you remember that last chapter of the New Testament? I don't remember. It's those four guys. They talk about Jesus returning and Mary Magdalene was the first one to see him. 
outside of his tomb, cave, and it was him, but he was dressed differently and he was in a garden. And um, you can come back if you want. You can come back if you want, but he was more useful in another plane. He wasn't as useful, that's why he, that was why his time was up. His usefulness was over. But we can come back if we want, but we get to choose. And who would stay here if they had the choice? Because it hurts here. So, once you've reached the frequency of play, that's nice. That's the frequency of joy. That's the frequency where you really do have your priorities straight, that fun, and you can start making your work into play. We want you to see it as a game. See it as a game. Start off with that spirit of, I'm going to invent a game. And then look at what you have to do and make it fun. Kelly had this idea that she could have the kids teach her how to clean the house because they'd turn it into a game. And the closest she could come up with was um, um, carrying Kamara on her back from the living room to the bedroom to work on a different cleaning project, which was fun. And it was probably good for her to crawl. Um, but she's welcoming that energy in. She's welcoming that knowledge that I can look at my daily life as play. Everything, all of my chores. If I just give myself a little extra silliness time, then I don't have to be super efficient and get it done really fast using all of my adrenaline stores. That's not sustainable, Kelly. You've got to find a way to clean while you've got serotonin and dopamine running through you and not chemically stimulated, but internally stimulated by your mind. Your thoughts are, are gathered that are joyful thoughts. And that's the, that's the fodder that you use to think up a way to accomplish your tasks. You're playful with it. That's sustainable. That's going to make the rest of your life a vacation. If you can figure out how to make your daily life a vacation, then what else is there? What else do you need? What else do you need? Just make your, just wake up happy. Make your morning happy. Find a way. Even if it's changing the way you think, changing the words that you listen to. Okay? Set alarms on your phone to remind you to think positively. Make anchors throughout your day that are habits to stop and think positively. Bless someone. Make a habit out of saying thank you. Make a habit out of blessing people. Make a habit of focusing on gratitude. It sounds like work, doesn't it? Focusing on gratitude. Just spot, find some time outside of everything and sit and, and be grateful for anything that you enjoy thinking about. And you're not doing it as a chore. You're doing it because it feels good. It feels good to think about the things you're grateful for. Even if it's just your favorite color, everybody can think of a favorite color. And if you can't think of a favorite color, then <laughs> do you have a favorite anything? Do you have a favorite animal? Is there a reason why you have that favorite? It doesn't matter. What's your favorite of anything? Why is it your favorite? It brings you joy. It makes you happy in some way. Even if it's a horror movie, there's something about it that is interesting in a way that delights you. Okay? And that teaches you about yourself. So as you think about these things, if you spend time pondering the things, then that, those thoughts that you consciously access on a daily basis are kind of like your working vocabulary. So if you set time aside to think about things that you enjoy, and then those things that you're consciously thinking of, because of this silly little exercise, those thoughts, those happy thoughts become in your short-term memory, your working vocabulary. Those are the things that are going to paint the pictures that you see for the rest of your day in your mind. The thoughts that come to you, are they're going to be pulled from those recent intentional thoughts, whether they're automatic and most likely negatively programmed, or if they're consciously summoned up with exercises like gratitude. We're trying to teach you a million different ways to reach towards the light. 
reach towards the light. It's going to take a little bit of effort outside of your, uh oh, a problem's coming up. I gotta ask for help times. So that's kind of where Kelly's at. She's She's gotta bring this in during the times of peace. And she's gotta acknowledge the truth during the times of peace. It's not get help from God and your spirit guides when you're having trouble and then go about your egoic, I forgot the truth goal of life to be a successful ego. Okay, we're undoing your ego. So we're going to show you that we can help you during your dark times. But then we're going to remind you that this is true during your good times. And if you can focus on this during your good times, that's where you can make some major change. Okay, when you're in your good times, because when you're in your good times, your energy is higher. And if you're in a higher frequency than your low times, and you reach even higher during those highest, those high frequency set point times, but you reach up to where we are from there. Forget about it. It's over. You're going to be flying. You're going to be flying and you're not going to see any dark times anymore because you're flying. You're flying up above all of the density. So when you say the prayer, I rise above the density of the earth. <sighs> we meet you there. We meet you there and then we can share with you the wisdom that we have that we can't tell you while you're in the lower density. We can only tell you while you're up here. So you can go into that low density and then just take a deep breath and it reminds you of us and then go, oh wait, I need your help. <laughs> and breathe and you calm down and then we're like, oh, this is why, how you could have done it differently and this is what you should do next time and blah, blah, blah. But what if you just woke up and we were like, you know what, there's a shortcut. And because you're asking us at 8 o'clock in the morning, this is the only time you can access that shortcuts right now. Because the mornings are holy. The mornings are the holiest time of the day. Between 4 and 7. Okay, if you can carve out some time between 4 and 7. It starts to settle down at 8. You know, the earlier the better. We know, Kelly, you don't want to hear this. <laughs> She's like, okay, maybe three years from now. Maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Anything's possible. <clears throat> All right. Um, we're with you. Take it easy. You got to the frequency of play. So this is not a time to get disappointed. This is a celebration time. And you're going to be celebrating more now because you understand play. The forest logs. It was those fallen logs. They gave me permission to be messy and I don't know what, I don't know what that did. Maybe that is the beginning of the healing of my four-year-old self that I have for a long time known something happened when I was four that shut down my play neural pathways. So maybe that's healing. Maybe that, that's all this silliness. The four-year-old in me is looking around like an, as an adult going, what the hell happened? <laughs> Everyone's all pissed off. Um, yeah. All right. Explore this. Um, 18 minutes. Wow. That didn't feel that long at all. It felt like four minutes. Um, all right. Peace and love, light and all, all that jazz. So it is. <laughs>